Okay, welcome to the final modeling activity of the semester. Um, and this will be the last tutorial video that I make from my garage, my quarantine castle. Uh, so we've studied a lot of different agent-based models up through uh, the last several weeks. And now, now it's time for you to write your very own one. Now don't panic. I know that sounds like a, a tall order, but lucky for us, uh, my good friends Itza Romanowska and Colin Wren have provided a really great, um, easy to follow tutorial. It's gonna walk you through all the steps you need to know in order to make your first functional model. So you get the tutorial text from um, the course uh, site, uh, the assignment page for this um, particular assignment. And I just want you to make sure that you can read it as a Google Doc. There's some links in there to, uh, if you want to learn more about Itza and Colin, they're great folks. And um, I'm sure if you really are into modeling, um, these are people whose careers you'd like to follow and maybe you'd like to go work with them. So there's a plug right there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It seems lengthy, but you just sort of take it step by step. What this video is going to do is to just show you a couple of the things, the places where you're going to click in NetLogo, and then everything else should be pretty clear in the text, you know, as you read forward in here. So I have NetLogo here up, again, 611. If you can't get 611 or any other version of NetLogo working on your computer, you can, I'm just moving that off the side of the screen, do part of the tutorial in NetLogo web. So I'm going to show you um, essentially how to you know do this the interface is similar but a little bit different so I'll show you after I show you the regular way to do it I'll show you how to do what you can do in, in that logo uh, net logo web here but let's go back to our uh, typical net logo uh, window this is what it is it starts up as a blank model and you remember our, our tabs interface info and code and here because it's a brand new model well, there's no code. <laughs> there's just a sort of, um, you know, pre-filled stand-in text over here in the info. And the interface is blank except for the universe or the canvas over here in which the model is going to play out. So the first thing that you're going to want to do and the first thing that the tutorial asks you to do is to create some buttons over here. So there's a variety of ways that you can do this. Um, if you like clicking things up here, you can choose what kind of input device you want. A button, a slider, a switch. Then there's a few other less um, common ones like choosers and input. And eventually you can have uh, text you know, showing up or plots being created, etc. cetera. Um, at this moment, we just want the button. So you can click Add, and then you can click in there. And now you have your button. So the two buttons that every model typically needs is a set up button and click OK. And uh, you can also right click in here and add a button, a go button. So what's happening here uh, when you create these buttons is it is making a little program object called go that from within the code you can call whenever it feels a button click. If it was a slider, it would call whatever value the slider is set at. Same thing for a pull down, etc. Now for output things like plots and little text boxes, these are little areas of the display that you can call into from the code and put some information into. So what we're doing is setting up little graphical interactions or interactive components that have software names in the code, in this case go and setup, are how we're going to reference these buttons in our actual code. So we'll just click OK over here. And go, actually, we should uh, click the forever button, which means that the button is held down. It's like you put your finger on the start button and just keep it held down. So this is like latches it shut until you unclick it. So we want to do that for sure for the go button. But the setup button, we only just wanted to click once to set up the model. And so we don't need it to be latched. And you can tell the difference because you see these little sort of loop symbol over here with two, two arrows looping back into himself. That tells us this is a, um, a forever button. Now to move these around, you can click and drag like this. And then once you see all of this stuff, it's highlighted. 
So you can drag it and put it wherever you want. And then to unselect, you click off of it somewhere. Or you can right click on it and put select like this. So that's useful if you want to select both of them and move them around together, which is nice. It's a little primitive in terms of how you position them, um, but you can also drag and resize them from any of these corners over here. So if you really wanted to make go button big, you could do that as well, uh, like so. And then you click off of it so that you have unselected it. And you will add your sliders, etc., in the same way. I just right click there, or I go down and pick slider here. Or in fact, you can probably, there's probably somewhere in here I can't remember anymore because I don't do that uh, uh, anymore about how to do that. So once you've got those in there, you can flip over to the code tab and then you can copy essentially the first little block of code. So I'm just going to right click, copy, and then paste it in there. And <clears throat> this is actually complete code at this point. Now you can type it in for sure. But if you want to avoid typos, you can do this. And so right now we have technically set up the model so that you can click this button. It doesn't do anything because there's no code between to set up and end. But here between to go, we have tick, which is a net logo primitive. And a primitive is a built-in piece of programming. So net logo, when you write tick, it knows already what to do. You don't have to tell it what a tick is. We are telling it what go is, right? We made the button, and now we're telling it what to do when we click on the button. So all we're doing it right now is telling it to tick. And just as a, a, a little bit, if you get bigger code, you can search for different keywords in here as well by clicking the find button over here. That can be coming in useful. So at this point, we can hit go, and oh, it says we have to do something before we're allowed to reset or to start the tick counter. So this is what we call an error or a bug report. Say, hey, your code, there's something to matter in your code. And you can get it when you try and run it, or you can hit this check button. And depending on what the bug is, it may show up when you hit check, or it may just show up when you try to run it. So what we need to do is to finish out our setup. And so I'm just going to copy this text here, you see? between to set up and end. And I'm going to paste it in here. And again, you can definitely type this in there. I just use some shortcuts. And it's helpful to uh, put in some spaces here just so that we can kind of keep our mind. When we're looking down, we can see that anything indented between the two and the end belongs in here. And anything that's not indented is something else. OK? So now we finally have some code. Technically, to get it started, we only needed to have reset ticks, right? But we put this stuff in there as well because it's in the tutorial. And I want you to definitely be reading about what this stuff is. Now, when I hit set up, all of a sudden we have things there. And we hit go. Now, nothing's happening to these things, but the ticks are definitely going very fast, right? Uh, forward here. So, right now, technically, the model is working, but the only thing that's happening is that it's progressing a tick every single. Uh, you know, iteration is being basically just the time is going forward. That's all that's really happening here. So I'm not going to show you the rest of the coding because you can essentially follow along with the tutorial from here. What I will show you is a couple of uh, useful things. So um, if you want to look at uh, the variables that are defined, now we don't have any yet, but you will eventually have in here. You can use from the tools, globals monitor, and it'll tell you all the variables you have defined, all the little things you've defined as named objects, right? All the turtles you can have dis displayed over here, and you can even click on them, and it will tell you stuff about them. Obviously, we haven't, we don't have any characteristics set up at the moment, so um, that's not going to be informative at this moment. And eventually, if you have patches, you can monitor them too. Um, but the other cool thing is like if you want to edit the shapes of your turtles, you can pick different shapes and you can find the names from here and the different sizes. You can import them as well. If you want to change the colors of them as well, you can look at the colors and find the sort of numbers that you would use to choose specific colors in the model. And the tutorial is going to explain to you about setting colors over here as well. 
And then, let's see. I want to take you to look up in dictionary. Um, this should either, well, maybe it's going to pop up the website. Uh, maybe the user manual is the, oh yeah, it's trying to load the website in the background. And now I'm frozen, of course. What a bummer. Oh, okay. That was funny. I got frozen for a little bit. So there we are. This is the user manual over here. And uh, probably the most important thing is, um, well, you got the interface guide over here, but the programming guide for you. And here it tells us all about, you know, the different steps to create the program. And it's, you know, you can use this as an additional tutorial if you want to read a little bit more depth about any of the specific commands, you can do that as well. And if you click on any of them, it takes you to the NetLogo dictionary in which all the primitives, all the commands are actually listed in here. And so, for example, if you see a bit of code and it says something like, uh, if no patches, well, what is no patches? You click on that and it reports what that is, right? And so all of this stuff, these are all the little languages that you need to know for proper programming in, in, in NetLogo. So before I close, I just want to show you the NetLogo web interface. The link I've given you is to a blank new model. But if it shows up with a, a model in there, you just click the new button here. And this is, um, you know, it's essentially the same thing as NetLogo, but it doesn't have all the abilities. So for example, when we get to part three of the tutorial and it asks you to download a map to use as a backdrop, NetLogo Web is not going to be able to do that. All right. Um, so you're going to have to just, if you're using NetLogo Web, you're just going to not be able to do the sort of import a specific bitmap as a background map for your canvas here. But you can do all the other stuff. And uh, essentially, you uh, would work down here in the tab that says code. And you also have the command center um, as well. But you can uh, add, sorry, over here, we have to change the mode from interactive to authoring. And then you can create buttons. And you can do the same thing, set up, OK. And it'll do that. And you can do go over here and click forever to make it a forever button. And you can drag these around. These are a little easier. You can just click on them and drag them around. And then down here in the NetLogo code section, you can add in, you know, essentially the same uh, code. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just copy it out of here since we edited it a little bit. You can put in the code from the tutorial into here. And if you want to check it, you hit recompile and it'll tell you if there are any errors. And um, now you can run it. So every time you change something, you have to hit recompile. And then now we can um, change back to interactive mode. And oh yeah, reset ticks. We didn't set setup. So now we can hit go and boom, the ticks go forward like that. OK. So um, that's the slight differences between programming in NetLogo and NetLogo Web. Um, you can also uh, export this to a NetLogo file, and then you could run it in you know, NetLogo 611 on your computer. And that'd be nice if you want to save your code. That's how you would do it. You can also export it as a standalone HTML. You can host it on your website. So that's how I've been hosting some of these other models on my own website. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, the one last thing I want to talk about is when you get to section three and there is a background map to download, you have to download it into the same place where your NetLogo uh, file is saved. So if you've been working in NetLogo, you want to make sure that you actually um, save your model and put it somewhere. I'm going to just go to uh, you know, my home folder over here. I'm just going to create a, f a new folder called NetLogo Models, right? 
and I'm going to save the code as dispersal.mlogo. That's the name of this model, what I'm going to call it. So now, on my computer, I can uh, open up my file browser and go to my NetLogo model. There's my dispersal.mlogo. So when I download the base map, right, I need to, it's going to pop up like this. And then I'm going to click the download button as soon as it loads up, whenever that's going to be. Uh, bandwidth is always limited. Okay, so there it is. And I want to navigate to exactly that same place and hit save so that the end logo, dispersal.end logo, and Ice Age Base Map BMP are in the same folder. If they're not next to each other, then when you get to that part of the tutorial and you say load in Ice Age Base Map, it's not going to be able to find that file. It has to be in the same folder. So that's just the one last little caveat that I wanted to tell you all um, about the tutorial. And otherwise, if you follow along with it, you should be able pretty straightforward to have some success. And finally, at the very, very end, there's a few optional additional things that you can uh, attempt to do. And those will be, you know, sort of fun additional things. And you could even start to think about how to extend this model even further. And if you read the programming guide and you get more familiar and comfortable with the style of logo programming, literally the sky's the limit in terms of the models that you can create. So with that said, best of luck. And I hope by the end of this, you'll have a working model of your very own.